coming up on Dr. 90210. We're in the middle of a desert, no living beings anywhere. It's the rays versus the wilderness. I think we'll adapt very, very well to nature. But will nature adapt to that outfit? <laughs> we'll just see who wins this showdown. Don't be stupid. No, I'm not stupid. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> One of the things was you couldn't, we couldn't wear sunglasses. Couldn't wear hats. We couldn't wear hats. Wow. So you would be in the sun. Really wearing a hat right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'd be in the sun for like 12 hours a day. My name's Kelly. I'm 37, and I'm going to see Dr. Kirby for a chemical peel. So what kind of treatments are you getting done? I think I'm going to get like like a medium grade chemical peel. Okay. Which I guess. They say it's like you're down for like seven to 10 days and then all your skin sloughs off. <laughs> I worked on Baywatch for four seasons. Started off as a bikini girl. And then one day David Hasselhoff came up and said, why aren't you a lifeguard? I said, because you never made me one. And from then on, I worked as a reoccurring lifeguard. It was the best summer job. In, I bet. Well, I guess the best job in the world at the time. I mean, we yeah. got paid to go to the beach every day. Right. I first discovered sun damage in my face about Maybe two years after I worked on Baywatch that I really took notice that things, you know, I, I, a lot more splotchiness than had been there before. Yeah, I'm having it done on Monday and I thought, gosh, if I go down there and work, I know. Oh, yeah. I'll be all scaly yeah. faced right. for like three days. Sloth, sloughing stuff. A couple of my biggest concerns with my face has been, uh, I have a giant, <laughs> a really big dark spot on my forehead. Dr. Kirby's gonna give me a, a chemical peel which I think will get rid of a lot of the dark spots and sun damage. Then, but then, so now you'll have to like keep doing things to keep it from coming back. Because right. Like some luck. Right. And a half. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Come hiking out. Stay in the shade whenever you can. You know, stuff like that. Yeah. Right. yeah. If I fully cover up in a burqa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think, that, would, uh, I think that would do it. Ready to go on your last ride before your big surgery day? Sure. What do you feel like going? Um, why don't we go through the canyon and into Malibu and have lunch? All right. Okay. Let's do it. Cool. You ride safe, huh? All right, honey. Thanks. All right. My name's Jana. I'm 46, and I'm going to see Dr. Diamond for a facial rejuvenation procedure. I've been riding about seven years. Getting on my bike is just another side of me. It's the tomboy side, it's the rebel, it's just a sense of freedom. I love speed, I love engines, and my bike is not a sissy bike. For a while there, I could hardly catch you because your bike's so fast. I try to stay up with you, but you it just stop trying. I'm always going to be faster than you, honey. <laughs> Chris is my boyfriend. We've been together a little over four years. So are you nervous about surgery? A little bit. Nervous and excited together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I know the surgery is not going to change me. It's not going to change who I am and what I look like. It's just going to improve on what I already am. Right. And that's what I'm excited about. I personally don't think you really need anything done. But I know for your self, you want to do this, so I think you're going to be real happy, and you're going to look awesome. I feel lately, when I look in the mirror, it's not who I am anymore. I look tired, I look droopy, and I don't like that. I like to look fresh and happy, and I think the surgery is going to help me do that. You know, two weeks after the surgery, you're going to look back and say, God, I'm glad I did that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Tonight is campy night. Oh! <laughs> We're going campy next week. Okay. So guess what? We got all the campy equipment out. We have to go for a dry run because camping is fun, but camping uh, can be dangerous. It was a very good thing that we had this dry run because it's a lot more complicated 
to put this equipment together. Now, Daddy is an experienced camper. I want you guys to observe how this is done. Assemble four long poles. Let's see what they mean by that. Oh my God, there's lots of poles in here. This camping trip is Robert's idea, and he keeps bragging about his camping and wilderness skills because of all the time he put in as an Eagle Scout. <laughs> They're pre-assembled. So I'm getting kind of anxious to see what that means. Oh my gosh, this looks complicated. Don't they have those like pop-up tents or something? This is the state-of-the-art camping equipment. Even though we have like an embarrassment of riches around here in Beverly Hills, we got the cars and the big houses and all the technical stuff, I think we we'll adapt very, very well to nature. It's a great tent. Not that great to me. <laughs> <laughs> Putting up the tent wasn't easy. I thought it was just gonna be a pop-up tent, but no, it took hours. Our spaceship is up. Now we're gonna put in the queen size. I asked him for a queen size bed. They almost gave me the, the strangest look I've ever seen. Look at this. Push firmly down. This will push air from the air pump chamber into the bed. This is probably the most <laughs> ridiculous system I have ever seen. Is it possible even that somebody would think of this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it says you could also alternatively use an air pump. Do we have one? Beautiful. OK, boys and girls, this is the most important part of a camping trip, right here. It's the bed. The nature of camping itself, no matter how nice the place will be or anything, is just not comfortable. We're in a tent, we're sleeping on the floor. So I, I just want to be comfortable. I'm going to get my pajamas on then. I'll be right back. I mean, we're camping. Yeah. So? Pajamas to sleep? No one sleeps in pajamas in the woods. No, I sleep in jeans. You just bear down to your uh, undies and you go to sleep. Oh. That's how you do it in the woods, right? Right, Sydney? We don't need pajamas to sleep. Let's go. Uh, but pajamas are comfortable. I'm definitely an outdoors kind of a guy. Uh, when I was raised by my foster family, I lived in a ranch. I was a Boy Scout. I love the outdoors. I've been waiting so long to go on this trip, this camping trip. Good night, Robbie. Good night. Good night, Haley. Good night, sweetheart. I love you. I love you, too. Hey. Where are the rats? Good night, rats. Good night, Sydney. I love you. Good night, Sydney. I so don't want to go camping. I really appreciate Aaron's efforts to be more domestic. So we're having salmon. I was going to make it blackened. I have a feeling it's going to be blackened no matter what. She's not a great cook, but she looks great in a cocktail dress. And that's half the battle. Jen, I'm Dr. Diamond. Nice to meet you. So what can I do for you? Well, I um, it, am interested in having you take a look at various areas of my face that I'm not happy with. Today is my consult with Dr. Diamond. I'm going to see if I'm a good candidate for facial rejuvenation. I have deep lines in here, expression lines, and my eyelids over the last couple of years have really gotten heavy. Um, almost to the point of affecting my vision. And I work out a lot. I eat really well. I take a lot of supplements. And it just seems like no matter what I do, I don't have control over what's happening. Jen is very energetic. She's in great shape. But the facial muscles don't respond the way the body muscles respond to exercise. So there are a lot of people these days, we're seeing a lot of women just like her, who are uh, young and in great shape, but, but can't keep their neck and jawline and eyelids in the same shape as their bodies. So for this area, what I, what I would definitely recommend is an endoscopic brow lift, which is a brow lift with hidden incisions hidden behind your hairline. 
You'll never see them, they're all very, very small. That's going to address these deep wrinkles and address this heaviness to the outer brow right here, okay? And it's going to allow us to really rejuvenate that in a very natural way. So, mini facelift, which will include hidden incisions that go behind the ear cartilage, into the ear crease, and tucked up behind the ear, and we can definitely get this all tucked up for you in a very nice, natural way. So I just saw Janet for her consult. I think she's an excellent candidate for the procedures that she wants. I expect in no way for her to look done, pulled, weird, or otherwise. I think she's gonna look fantastic and really natural. This will be great. I'm really excited for you. I think you'll do great. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Piece of ass, aren't you? What? I'd like to retract that statement. A piece of ass? Well, I just think you're sexy. I don't really know how to tell you. I really enjoy having Erin in my life. It's been great since she moved in. It's kind of like living with your best friend. Yeah, I have burned these. <laughs> I think. Awesome. I think so too. I'm not a culinary expert, but. Well, not all of them, just some of them. Since I moved in with Will, I feel the need to be more domestic. But with Will, it's like he's happy with Taco Bell every night. All right, so we're having salmon. I was going to make it blackened. Are you all right with that? I have a feeling it's going to be blackened no matter what. Just kidding. Can I have some confidence? Sorry, I have please? total confidence in you. I took foods in seventh grade. I know these things. Oh. Are you sure you're supposed to do that? No. Is Erin a good cook? She's not a great cook. She's great at ordering food. She looks great in a cocktail dress. And that's half the battle. Um, I want to toast to, um, how lucky you are to be here with me tonight. Cheers to that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. The classic, I'm, classic I'm kidding. well toast. I'm kidding. No, really. I sincerely. I. It's okay. It's fine. I feel great. <laughs> Grab your napkin, because I'm so lucky to be here. <laughs> here we go. No, seriously, I love you very much, and I'm, I'm, I'm so blessed to have you in my life. Sure you do. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Thanks, babe. Are you being romantical? Yeah, I'm very romantic. I have a high level of romanticism in me. Yeah. I really appreciate Erin's efforts as a cook. She really wants to be more domestic. The truth is, I don't really care. I'm not the kind of guy who wants that picket fence. I don't want the two and a half kids. I like to go out to dinner. I like to have a fun time when I'm out. It doesn't matter to me if she can cook or not. It's a little salty. Is it? A little bit, yeah. Yours might even be worse. Mmm. Pretty salty. And really bad. No, I can't really eat that. Or, I, I care about you so much, but I can't eat this. Is that okay? Yeah, I don't want you. Are Aaron and I a great couple? Or a great looking couple? No couple is perfect, but in my mind, this relationship is as perfect as it can be. <laughs> You're sweet. I'm a little nervous just because of the pain. My mom says it'll sting like a bee. Or a swarm of bees. <laughs> just kidding. Great. Kelly Vaughn, how are you? Hey, how are you? Good to see nice you. to see you. Look at this little angel. What could I possibly be doing for you today? Aww. Why are you possibly here? I can't, there's nothing I can do for you. Yeah, right. I'm here today at Dr. Kirby's office for my appointment to get my chemical peel. I'm really excited to get it done. I'm a little nervous just because of the pain, but you know, no pain, no gain. So I'm really excited. Let's look at your face together and tell me what bothers you. Oh, we have no makeup. That's what bothers me. Um, this part right here. Okay. And then I have like a chicken pox scar and mm -hmm. you know, some little scars in there. Okay. And then for kicks, I'd like to get my upper lip just a little bit. Now you're talking dirty to me. I like this. <laughs> I like the way you think. You know? Um, Are you going to get your mole removed? Oh, and my mole. I forgot about A little of everything. So we'll do the Botox, we'll remove the mole, plump up the lips, and do a chemical peel. Sounds good. Let me change into my scrubs and then we'll get you started. Okay. I'll be right back. All right. 
Kelly has what we call normal aging. She has normal sun damaged skin, but we can reverse that. I want to make her look as young on the outside as she feels on the inside. The chemical peel is the worst, but you'll be really pleased in the long run. All right. My mom says it'll sting like a bee, a big bee. Exactly, or a swarm of bees. Just kidding. <laughs> Great. No, just kidding, just kidding. It's not oh, bad at no. all. <laughs> Go ahead and put your head back for me, Kelly. Close your eye. Little tiny pinch on three, okay? Little tiny stick. One, two, three, little pinch. Sorry about that. It's just a little uncomfortable. Why are you guys looking at me like that? Because you're bleeding. You're a good bleeder. I'm a real good bleeder. I can tell. You should be nice and numbed up now. I can definitely feel the numbness in that one, not so much that one. Good. No problem. You're not going to feel this anyway. Beautiful. Came right off. Give me just one second. That's amazing. Okay, here's your favorite part. We're gonna get you numbed up in your mouth. Second, what that's gonna do is numb up the whole top of your upper lip. Feeling okay? Okay, smile. Let's give you a couple injections of Botox. Okay. And the key with Botox, Botox is really experience. Mm -hmm. The reason I feel so comfortable doing it is one, I do a lot of it, but two, I'm the only doctor I know who does Botox on themselves. So <laughs> if you can do it on yourself, you kind of have to feel pretty comfortable doing it. Um, get really surprised for me. Great, go ahead and relax. Really angry now? Okay, great. Couple of pinches in the middle, little tiny stick. One, two, three, little pinch. Great. Okay, relax. Little tiny pinch here. One, two, three, little stick. Great, real surprised again. Relax. Little tiny pinch here. Two things we're gonna do on the um, lips of the lower face. We're gonna sort of reconstruct your upper lip and maybe plump up your lower lip just a little bit. So you might feel a little pressure. If you feel pain, you tell me we can always inject you more. Little tiny stick on three. One, two, three, little pinch. Might feel a little bit of pain, sorry about that. Okay, let me clean you up there a little bit, Kelly. I want, to, I want you to look and tell me what you think. Okay. Oh, wow. Is that a wow, a good wow, or is that it a wow? Great. And you're gonna notice, you, you need to give it a good few days to calm down before you can really get an accurate look. So we're gonna do a light chemical peel now. So this chemical peel is gonna burn a little bit. At first it feels cool, and after a few minutes it's gonna burn. What we're gonna do is, um, uh, if I need to, I'm going to put on some cool towelettes for you, which should help quite a bit. And I'm going to peel nice and deep here where you have this discoloration on your forehead. Don't worry, we'll put some cool pads on there. It hurts like a mother. It is uncomfortable. You're doing great, though. Done like a swarm of bees, just like you said. I just had my chemical peel, and <laughs> my mouth is so numb right now, I can't even talk. <laughs> um, and it, it kind of tingles right now. It didn't hurt as bad as I thought it would. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that bad. I'd definitely do it again. But then I'd be um, doing you a disservice if I didn't mention how dark you are. You're getting a lot of sun. Yeah. I want well, you I was pale. in the sun all day yesterday. Oh, Matthew McConaughey was on the beach. I'm not nervous about what Dr. Diamond's going to do, because I know he's going to do great. I'm nervous about going under general yeah. anesthetic, because... I can tell you're nervous. Yeah. And you'll be fine. Yeah. You're in good hands. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about it. Today is my surgery day. I'm nervous and excited. I'm excited about what Dr. Diamond is going to do, so I'll just be glad when it's all done. Morning, Janet. How are you? Good. How are you? Are you excited? Yeah, I am. I'm nervous. You are well, nervous? Yeah, but I'm excited too. Okay. It's normal to be nervous. I'd be more worried about you if you weren't nervous, okay? Today's Janet's surgery. We're planning to uh, inject fat into her face. We're planning to do a mini brow lift, an upper eyelid rejuvenation, and a mini facelift. I'm going to inject fat into the hollowness above this blue dotted line okay. into this hollowness to the lower eyelids. Great. Let's see about getting some fat from your legs. As we age, our faces actually lose fat. We lose volume, and it's very youthful to put volume back into the face. So fat is the best uh, filler for that purpose, and if people have it, that's the best thing to use because it can be permanent. You'll do great. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm really excited, excited about it. I'm right? excited for yeah. you. You're gonna do great, I'll take great care of you. Jaina wants to look younger, and she definitely will look better and look younger. She'll be very happy. Give you a little bit of medication, make you a little bit 
more comfortable. I can feel whatever you just did. Yeah, that medicine works pretty quickly, fortunately. And then we're going to go ahead and let you go to sleep. And we'll see you in just a little bit. I really wanted my guy friends to get along with Aaron. When is the engagement? Oh, Jack, please! We're going camping just to enjoy ourselves as a family. We're basically in the middle of nowhere. We got a big problem here. Today's Janice surgery. I've already gone over her surgery in my head 20 times over the past month, like I do everybody. The week before, the night before, the morning of. But here it is. This is this is showtime. This is game time. So we're gonna see what we get out of here. And I'm just trying to take a very even, smooth amount of fat. This is not gonna make any difference in her cosmetic appearance, really. At least I think that's all I'm gonna take. Tell me what we got. 14. Oh, we're good. Yeah, we're good. So with the fat, we inject what's called the micro droplet technique, which means we put tiny little pearls of fat in at a time. And this way we can be real precise, make sure we don't get lumps. So I finished the fat to the lower eyelids, and it's perfect. And now we're going to build up the cheeks just a little bit. And I'm already really excited about how this is going to look for her. This is just a work of art coming together right in front of our eyes. So we're about to start the brow lift. We go real precisely right between the hair follicles. You can see that's hidden well behind the hair. No one, her hairdresser won't even know that incision's there. And we're basically just lifting all the scalp tissue right off the bone of the skull. And it's going to allow us to slide everything back. So what we want to hear is we want to hear that scraping. That means we've got everything off in a nice thick plane. It sounds a little more severe than it is. At this point, we use the camera so that we can see what's going on way underneath. So you can see here's the outside. We're about to go in. And now you can see underneath. So right now we've got the camera entering one incision. And this allows me to work while I watch it on TV through these very, very small incisions. And small incisions, small scars. So now we finished the brows. Basically, we just released the brow, and just releasing it, it allows it to come up. That's all we need to do. And now we're just getting ready to do the eyelids. So I'm about to start the upper eyelid procedure. This is exactly the same procedure we did on Dr. Matlock. Dr. Matlock's looking great. That guy is ageless. So on this side, we put in an invisible suture. It goes underneath the skin. And I just finished this side. Now I need to go do it on the other side. So at this point, I'm looking at these neck muscles, and they're a little bit loose. But I think that by pulling them up this way, it's going to be enough to give her the result she needs without tightening them through here. And we'll, we'll see. So now we're just lifting the skin off the muscles. And this is really, this is really, in my opinion, where the facelift is made. This is what I do. Tightening the muscles the way to go. Okay, and that's just perfect right there. Absolutely perfect. We've tightened up the deeper layers. Now the skin, you can see, just lays. The extra is just there. So all the skin is going to be removed without me even pulling on it, just by it wanting to come. Now we've tightened up one side of the face. We've got one other side of the face to go, and we're done. We're done. This neck and jawline is just as, you know, as nice as it could be. Very natural. The incisions are going to be invisible. Um, it's just great. So she's just going to do some healing now.
So Janice's surgery is complete. It went perfect. I was very particular with everything, and she's going to be really, really happy with the results. I'm really excited about it. Well, let me show you some things here. Okay. So point out. Okay. Number one, look how nice her cheeks are. We filled them with a little fat. How nice that volume's going to look. Right. She's just really swollen right now, right? Yeah, real swollen. Look at her neck and jawline. Mm -hmm. You know, it's as tight as it was when she was probably 20. So it's all great. Yeah. I would expect Janet to be looking pretty good by about five to seven days. You'll be fine. You'll be real happy. I mean, you look really good. Do I want my umbrella? I will get your umbrella after I'm finished packing. We're already running way behind. OK. Me and Robert have just been kind of at each other's throats in the past couple of weeks um, because he's around more often. So we're going camping just to get away and just to enjoy ourselves as a family. Oh, my gosh. Our ice cream maker is rolling down the, is rolling down the, oh, my gosh, we're rolling to the street. I'm nervous. I'm a bit nervous about the elements, like bears and bugs and <laughs> stuff like that. It's going to be an experience, that's for sure. Can you hear me? Mommy, let's do it. Can you yes. hear me? You know, I just can't wait to get going on this trip. I'm definitely an outdoors kind of a guy. I was a Boy Scout. I love the outdoors. So we're very, very, very excited to go. Look at this. Oh, my god. For the three of us. This is unbelievable. You're moving out. You never told me you're moving out. <laughs> yeah, I'm moving out of here to a tent. You finally got fed up. <laughs> oh, my god. In a second, in a second. This is camping. We're supposed to rough it, you know? Rough it. Oh, my god. Robert gave me a really hard time about packing so much clothes for the weekend. OK, now we're going to put the rest. That's the problem. I just feel that I want to be totally ready for anything. I want to have my warm clothes, my cold clothes. I want to have romantic clothes, you know, if we have time at night. For whatever. <laughs> Can you fit my uh, Robbie's pajamas and my hair dryer inside? Why do you need a hair dryer? Because if I go swimming, we're gonna be in the forest. Take a shower. There's no plug in the forest. Yeah. Wind dry your hair in the in the in the in the forest. No, I can't. What do you mean you can't? Are you serious? You wanna bring this? You know, I'll find this somewhere. Enormous blow dryer. This is crazy. If there's a bathroom. And they should have a plug. No, right? the bathroom's not gonna have any plugs. I'll find someone with a trailer. We have no <laughs> I will. You know, the, the thing that I can't figure out is, you know, we're roughing it, but Haley's packing in the blow dryers and the makeup and the I mean, blow dryer. There's no plugs anywhere, Haley. Where are you gonna? This is not like a five-star resort. Underneath every bush is not a, a plug. Why do I feel like we're seeing our house for the last time? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like goodbye house. I'm intimidated well, by you. You're like, very okay, tall and beautiful. Right. I'm easily intimidated by you. <laughs> Usually in LA, it's just me and my guy friends. Or in New York, it's just me and my girlfriend. And now, it's the melding of the two worlds. We'll see what happens when the two worlds collide. Look who's here. What's up, guys? Hey! Good dog! What's happening? How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Good to see you. I'm always the second best looking man looking wherever I go. How are you, buddy? I'm a man. I'm good. I'm good. I love, love, love Will's friends. I mean, I love Boogie. And Tony is like little brother to me, and Boogie has just been so supportive of our relationship. At least I feel like he has. You know who I'm marrying? The offspring of Will Kirby and Aaron Brody. That first daughter, I'm all over it. If we get her athletic genes and my level of ambition, it'll be a normal kid. If we get my athletic genes and her shopping ability, it's gonna be a mess. We're really on a budget these days. Oh, are you guys combining uh, finances? the budget. Get crazy, dude. Don't get crazy. <laughs> Why would you care if it's not your money? I really wanted my guy friends to get along with Aaron, and they did too well. Now that you've moved in, when is it gonna go down? It's AKA gonna go down. the engagement. You guys aren't 23. I mean, what are you, a matchmaker? <laughs> You're in your early 30s. Uh, it might be time to start getting serious. You know what, time out. Aaron, you know idea. what? Aaron. Or at least Will is. Aaron, he's stringing you along, sweetheart. Aaron. I was hoping my girlfriend and my friends would hit it off. I just didn't know you guys were going to gang up on me. We're not gang, babe, we're not gang. 